Welcome to Speaking Our Peace. My name is Annie Luck. Today, we share our final episode for season one with you. In this episode, the four of us who produce this podcast reflect upon an eventful year, and also our experiences in initiating conversations on peace and nonviolence. We also looked into the future and talk about plans for season two. Okay, so we are recording. Excellent. So we are coming to the end of our first season of Speaking Our Peace. And um, the first question that I had for all three of you was, what's your greatest learning through this season? I'll go first. If you want to start, go ahead, go ahead, Amy. Uh, the first thing that popped into my head, I have to admit, is putting a podcast together is a lot of work. <laughs> and um, it's probably way more work than I had, you know, when I signed up for this. But uh, it's also been a lot of fun. Um, I think one thing I learned is just it's great for the four of us to work together, bouncing ideas off, you know, with our different perspectives and different experiences bringing to the table. Um, and I think it's in on a different scale, that's kind of similar to kind of what I've learned from the people that I've talked to, um, all the episodes that we've put out. It's just there are there are really just as many perspectives as there are people. And I think everyone has some really, really interesting stories to tell. Um, so I guess on one hand, we will never run out of stories and because we're un un unlikely that we'll run out of people um, that we can speak to and, and feature on the podcast. But at the same time, so I'm a little daunted by it. Just, there could be a lot of people that we end up talking to. So I'm, I don't know, I'm feeling a little strange at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, strange is fine. Um, Ashima, your greatest learning. Yeah, so I was actually, I was walking uh, on a hill and I was really thinking about it, that what has been the journey in last uh, six, seven months. And um, I am feeling that uh, when I when we started, I was very much into this that, oh, okay, how podcast can be done, how perfectly the things can be put together, what kind of music, uh, what format, what form. But as time passed, uh, the stories mattered and the team mattered. And then I was realizing that, okay, uh, what if people come together on voluntary basis and then they have this uh, inner aspiration or inner will to do things together. And I think that was one thing which really touched me. All through the journey is how people support each other, even uh, within the team, uh, how we create a support system for each other so that we keep our motivation up uh, and also with people when you when you even give them half an hour or one hour uh, that just lifts something up uh, for them because when you tell a story um, you revive something and you realize that oh okay you have done so many things in your life and somebody is listening to your story so I think that that is the biggest learning. So sometimes, uh, though I am a storyteller, I work with theater. Sometimes I also forget the importance of a story and the strength of the stories. But uh, I think doing this podcast has um, ignited again that kind that that fire in me that yes, stories are so much needed in these times. Yeah. Wow, that's great, Priya. Your greatest learning. I think going back to when um, when there was no podcast and I thought that there like should be something and really like my, I, I wanted there to be a way for the audience to feel like it wasn't out of reach to just start taking action and doing things that you thought needed to be done. And I think my greatest learning was going through that process myself that I kind of hoped for for other people um, and how much uh, work it is. Like it, it sounds simple when you're like, hey, 
you see something, there's a need, do it. Like, it's not that simple. There, it takes time. It takes a lot of effort to learn new skills. Um, but finding um, a team and finding a group of people that you trust and that support you and you support them has been extremely powerful. Um, and so uh, I think my greatest learning is going forward into whatever um, whatever supportive roles I can be in for other folks who are trying to begin their own nonviolence work or um, whatever other things that I do in my life. Like, I think that a lesson that I'll take with me is to find other people, to connect with other people on a personal level and, and bring them forward into the team work together, <laughs> not alone. I think I told you all this, that I went back to listen to uh, the previous conversations we had. And in that very first one that became the trailer or became the, the fodder for the trailer, each of you uh, said uh, some things that, that kind of, uh, that you were hoping for out of this podcast. And actually uh, Shima and Annie, yours were very similar. Um, you were both talking about bringing people together. Um, and uh, so I wonder, maybe Ashima, you can start this time. Um, to what extent do you feel like you have been able to do that or to see that happen, that, that notion of bringing people together? Yeah, so um, um, I think with time, my perspective to see how people come together has also changed, particularly during COVID times. I have realized maybe my perspective shifted how people can be together and what is real togetherness or what sharing means. So um, sometimes I feel that when we do the podcast um, or when we just having our meetings, sharing personal uh, struggles and personal uh, dreams and happiness is is more community feeling than I used mm -hmm. to feel that, okay, people come together for some work or uh, people come together for a shared dream. So my, I, my perspective has, I think, shifted from very work or task oriented community uh, to a community which is having bonds where you can be more vulnerable, you can share that, okay, maybe I can't do this thing this time. I need your support in this way. May, uh, can, I, can I talk to you for some time because I'm feeling low or can I share something with you because I'm really feeling happy. So um, yeah, I, I think that uh, that really happened with the, at least some people. Uh, I, I won't say that in the whole podcast, I am able to uh, connect to all the people I have met or I have interviewed, but at least I know that I can share anything and there will be no hesitation in my heart to at least some people. <laughs> and mm -hmm. yeah, and I think I will see communities more in that perspective now on. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, whether, whether it is just sharing a small meal or just asking how they are doing health wise and just keeping that contact with them so that it's not it's not feeling like you're just there for a task or a dream, but your lives really connect to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, Annie? Um, did you do you feel like you you got closer to that ideal of bringing people together? Um, from my personal perspective, I would say that's absolutely true for the four of us. Like, I really okay. feel like we have built kind of our little community together. Um, but I think that also 
tells me that, you know, if that's the kind of community I want to build, it takes a lot of work and a lot of time and commitment to really, because I think part of the community building among just the four of us is, you know, our weekly check-ins that we actually, you know, debate, discuss, you know, talk through a lot of pretty big ideas. I mean, producing the podcast definitely is kind of this, the, cent- the, the centerpiece of it, but out of that, I think we've talked about some pretty big, complex, you know, ideas. So I think to me, this is kind of the center of the community. And then I think, you know, a little bit, you know, another ring outside of that, I would say is kind of what the podcast seems to serve as um, almost a bit like a launching pad for, like connecting with the other webinars and the other people that we're working with. So I think it kind of like what Ashima is saying, like I'm not necessarily staying in contact with some of the people that I I spoke with uh, or interview um, for the episodes, but they're kind of in the outer ring (laughs) for me. And I know they're there, um, hopefully that, you know, they remember who who I was and kind of all that. and I'm hoping, and this is probably the least that I know about is, and because it's broadcasting, it's we talking and someone listening, and I don't know who those people are. So I think even the one, another layer out, I'm hoping that the people listening are coming together. But I mean, to me, this is where probably a little bit of leap of faith um, is required. Yeah. That's a great segue because Priya, what you said was about witnessing and also connecting with people out there who would listen to this. And uh, so I wonder, how do you feel uh, how we've done in terms of, of your big hope for the series so far? Um, I think that we have done Uh, a really good job of bearing witness to the people who we've interviewed the um, I don't know how it happened but um, as interviewers Annie and Ashima you guys are phenomenal Um, I (laughs) I struggle with interviewing a lot I get really nervous (laughs) Um, but I you do such a great job of um, capturing not just the um, the content of the story, but also the feeling of the person, which was something that I really hoped would happen. Not to witness, not just the work, but the who is behind the work. Um, so that is, um, I think we've done a really good job. And I think that um, as far as connecting with the outside, <laughs> the outer world, the leap of faith, uh, as Annie put it, um, I don't, it's hard to tell. And I think that that is a part of all podcasting. I do not interact with any of the people who make the podcasts I listen to. Um, and, but I do need them and appreciate them. And, you know, and so I think that as a, as a um, sort of format, it's, there's limitations in some way, but what I hope is that for season two, we developed some ways to do more outreach um, to hopefully connect with people on a more personal level. Okay, so let's move to the the midway conversation. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give each of you um, one word that came out or or a phrase that came out of what you said during that midway interview um that i want you to to jump off of and and you know just use it as a kind of prompt to think about uh what you're thinking now about the podcast so priya why don't we start with you this time uh the phrase for you is conversations we have been needing to have That feels uh, really relevant to me. Uh, living in the United States, there is a conversation that 
Americans need to have about the topic of nonviolence. Um, there is, I, I get on my soapbox a lot about this and I will not, I'm not trying not to do that here. Um, but um, there is a way in which that term has been used in the United States, particularly in like the educational system uh, that has led Americans to believe that nonviolence is passivity, um, which is if our podcast is proof of anything, it's proof that that's not the case. Um, and because of that, um, people who want social change are critical of the idea of nonviolence work. Um, without realizing that a lot of the things that they want are um, fit into that category. Things like mutual aid um, come to mind. Um, but for me, I think that the conversation we need to have is about taking nonviolent action, not just breaking the system down, but building what it's supposed to be. Um, and that is um, a conversation I'm part, proud to be a part of. That's fantastic. Love it. Ashima, your phrase is spiritual journey. Oh, um, it's the spiritual journey um, which I see with other people and with me is also, I think, what Priya is suggesting uh, now taking more turns into actions and actions with patience and really slow pace and really being patient about it because um, I, I if I see last months and how the world has shifted into different kind of dynamics altogether in la, one year we we do things uh, very slowly we do we feel that they are mundane but they really hold value. If somebody would not cook for us or somebody would not grow food for us or somebody would not be mending the roads, it, it you know, the, the life is not going to really sustain as we see. And, and I, sometimes I feel that they are the real nonviolent actions. They, they just happen every day. We don't see them. And that's how we treat sometimes nonviolence. And, uh, we sometimes also feel like if I talk about spiritual journey, uh, maybe intellectuals take spiritual journey into more reading about Buddha or uh, uh, reading different texts. But if I see these people who are into working class or who are just simple peasants or artisans, their work is so much spiritual, like they're taking every day something into their hand, they are working with it, they are just spending so much time, so much mindfulness uh, with that. And uh, that's how they live their life. They, they uh, absorb that whole experience into their bodies and they are really, they are really um, patient. They are really humble. They are really down to earth. And mm -hmm. we feel that uh, they don't know anything, but I think doing those all small works mm -hmm. is, um, is, going into them, feeding into them mm -hmm. to live a life which is such simply, uh, like such simple uh, manifestation of, uh, I think, highest form of spiritual uh, journey. So, uh, yeah, that that I'm realizing nowadays. And with that, I, I feel more and more connected to people who are on field. And I also feel that... Uh, Maybe I just need to forget about all the big jargons and uh, put myself into smaller works. And uh, mm -hmm. we call them small, but they are the they are the wheels of life. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that has been my journey. Also, um, I think um, spirituality needs to re be redefined in this world. I sometimes feel that. Uh, we already know, everybody knows inside uh, that what what path they have to take or what path mm -hmm. uh, will be holistic with the nature, with the environment, with the planet, with the all living beings which are there. So 
it's just that we uh, just we put our eyes close to whatever is happening mm. yeah so. wow <laughs> amazing amazing so annie uh and i i came up with this phrase before we started our conversation this morning but your phrase is rejuvenation and optimism i think i did get there <laughs> It's, I have to say though, um, I think working on the podcast has sustained my sense of optimism. We did not pick the easiest time to start this thing. It's, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, I was skeptical of just kind of talking to people online that we don't know and just kind of how this is gonna work. And I think throughout and to be honest, during the interviews kind of fray, uh, phase of the work, I was pretty pumped um, or rejuvenated in the sense that, you know, I got to talk to different people. And, but I think that actually continued on as I started slowing down and doing the editing. And now we start planning for the, for the next season. It's, there's, I guess, yeah. Um, it's, I do think, yeah, I'm not sure that I have been rejuvenated um, necessarily all the time, but I think every time that I do something about with the podcast, I do draw a fair amount of energy from the people that I'm listening to when I'm editing or listening to when I'm interviewing them. So, um, so maybe selfishly speaking, um, it's, uh, it's helped me a lot. <laughs> Okay, so I have one last question for you, and then I'm going to just let you say whatever you want after that. But here's the last question that I have. Um, what are your thoughts and hopes for next season? I'm going to let that sink in for a second. And Annie, do you want to start that one? I want to continue what we, I really, I agree with what Priya said, that I think we have put out a very, very solid first season. Um, so I want to continue this, I want to build on this. Um, I want, I want to be able to deepen some of the conversations. Um, but also start bringing maybe even a broader range of people. So I want to go deep and I want to go broad. Um, more different people into, into the podcast, um, really showing just the variety of ways that we can all contribute to peace and nonviolence. Um, that there is that I want us, to, I want people to get excited to hear just about different things that people are doing and mm -hmm. perhaps spark something in them thinking that, oh, I don't have to be doing extraordinary things and things that I might think as ordinary could become extraordinary. Um, that's what I would really hope for. I think to some degree, I feel like I have been able to do that. It's, although putting out a podcast is extraordinary. <laughs> It's a lot of work. <laughs> it requires a fair amount of skills. Um, it seems like having conversation is such an ordinary thing to do. And I think we have put out some pretty extraordinary stories out of a very ordinary act of conversation. So I'd like to keep that going. Excellent. Thanks. Priya, thoughts and hopes for next season? I think it's been like it's been a really good experience having these conversations, these sort of deep personal one-on-ones with different folks. Um, Javier's comes to mind. Um, that was such a, it was such a like good conversation, but it felt really personal. And that I felt like I was sitting in a room, just like fly on the wall, um, getting to enjoy um, just a, 
tea between friends kind of thing. And that I want to keep the spirit of that in season two. Um, I think that kind of, it, there's some dovetailing with things that both of you have said, something that Ashima said about taking things to a very small level, bringing things down to like a very minute level that connects with everything, every plant and atom and tree and whatever. Um, I, I want the podcast to feel like it connects down to the roots of the experience of people. Um, and then also somehow like bridge that to these massive topics that we've had conversations about and, um, you know, ideas that we've had for um, episodes for next season. We have some like pretty cool, amazing ideas planned. And I just want people to be able to feel it. Not that these ideas are only a scholarly pursuit, but also something that can be lived and are lived in the global context. I think that that is a huge part of what I hope for. Oh, that's fantastic. Ashima, thoughts and hopes for next season? Um, yeah, I, I resonate with uh, what Annie and Priya are saying. And I also feel that uh, maybe in this season, I won't uh, think much about the technicality of the editing or something like that, but the podcast may retain the warmth uh, which people hold the relationship they they can really kindle after the podcast because there are lo so many stories and maybe they can contact those people and really share their work and their life stories. Um, also, I I hope that more um, more voices from indigenous communities and the rural communities can come up. Um, old wise people telling just the stories of how they have lived all their life so sustainably and taking small actions which which nobody told them that they are non-violent or they they have these uh, values of being in a being in harmony with nature but they just did it and how they how the stories passed on one generation to another uh, I hope to see some of them. And uh, I also feel that the circle widens from four of us to many more and maybe many more people can take the ownership of doing these kind of things. And we can also share with them what we have done when like four people can come who had very less knowledge of doing podcast, uh, <laughs> at least two of us. So. I think anybody can do it and uh, you know it's just the will which which will work and uh, not the technicality of it mm -hmm. so yes that's what my learning is also that uh, maybe sometimes we just get stuck into these things um, but it is my hope also that maybe with this this podcast these stories more people can join hands and mm -hmm. uh, take just small actions and feel that okay they are visible they are seen they are heard and they are there and they are connected. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so for, before we close off then, one thing that you would want to say to the listeners. Priya? Have hope. That's all. Wow. <laughs> Ashima? So some lines of Kabir are coming to my mind. Maybe I'll just recite them. And uh, I have not thought about those lines, how they connect to it, but they are just coming intuitively. And it says that um, we just love. We love without any technicality in our mind or without any logic in our mind. And whether we are in this world or whether we are outside this world, we will keep on believing the humanity. So um, this goes like this. Hamne hai ishq mastana, hamne ko hoshiyari kya? 
हमर है इश्क मस्ताना हमन को होशियारी क्या रहे आजाद या जग में रहे आजाद या जग में हमन दुनिया से यारी क्या हमन है इश्क मस्ताना या सो आई जस्ट होप दैट वी कीप दैट लव एंड पैशन विद इन अवर हार्ट एंड the reader the listeners can also feel that through the stories and they can also do those small things in their life and yes just that that yeah. is beautiful thank you so much ashima thank you any well, that's a hard act to follow uh, <laughs> i'm not going to say because that would cause us to lose listeners um <laughs> So I would say keep an open mind and stay connected and join in. Wow, that's perfect. That's perfect. Thank you all. Thank you for listening. We hope you found something that resonates with you as you hear our own stories and any of the other stories that we've shared with you in this very first season of our podcast. Speaking Our Peace is produced by Annie Luck, Ashima Vishnoy, Priya Joshi, and Reva Joshi. We can be reached by email at speakingourpeace at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Our Peace Podcast. Or check out our website, speakingourpeace.com. Our music is made by Sunbear. We would like to thank the support from the International Gandhian Institute for Nonviolence and Peace Canada, the Mohammed Gandhi Canadian Foundation for World Peace, and Jai Jagat for their support. We look forward to seeing you when we launch Season 2 on September 26, 2021.